What's up America? This is Kim with Geauga Firearms Academy and today we're going to be reviewing the Walther PDP Compact. Before we begin the review, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Bomb Shot. They reached out to us and what it is, is a shot, it's a shotgun shell and it has chapstick inside. And when I heard the story about their company, I told them I'd give a little quick shout out on one of our videos. Um, it's a natural chapstick. It's made with high quality beeswax, aloe, it has sun protection in and there's some other um, natural ingredients. They have classic pomegranate. I have the vanilla mint in my purse right now and I really like that one a lot. But what's really great about them is they're an American company and uh, the owner's son was actually born with Down syndrome. So they want to provide a healthy place for people with special needs to come and work. So check out Bomb Shot. They're a great company and they're doing great things. So this is the Walther PDP. We're going to show you the unboxing if you will. You guys know I'm not into that so much, but I want you to see at least what you get in the box itself. And thank you to the person who let me use this for the review. All right, what do, you see, what do we get? Let's open up this lovely plastic box mm -hmm. to see what we have inside. So of course we got the pistol. They uh, went with an optic, so they had a cut for an optic. Uh, we In the shooting portion later, you're gonna see we took that off. Uh, we have two magazines that came with it. Um, and they're 15 rounders. And they're 15 rounders. Um, a magazine loader. Um, some different back straps, so it has a small, a medium, and a large, so you can adjust it to your hand size, which I think is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, of course, a flag. And just so you guys know, the plastic mm -hmm. plate, uh, or the plastic cover, if you will, for the optics cut, I mean, that's obviously on there at first, and then you're going to get that one plate. So there's one that, optic, or that, uh, that Walther will send you for free. So you just pick the, the optic that you want and that you can get that sent to you guys for free. We'll get into the new uh, upgrades of this from the pre the predecessor, which would be the P99. Maybe if time allows one of these days, we'll, we'll, we'll do a kind of an old versus new. But what does the PDP stand for, Kim? Performance Duty Pistol. All right. And the one thing that you guys are going to notice right off the bat, at least every time I've seen one of these, it looks really clunky and heavy. Do you agree with that? Oh, yeah. I believe one of the reasons why it looks it just looks heavy is because how... The slide just looks like it's super thick and heavy, especially with these super terrain serrations, as they call it. There's a boatload of acronyms that these guys use uh, for describing this pistol. For example, do you know what the trigger is called? I did my research. It's performance duty trigger. Everything seems to be performance <laughs> duty something, right? You can pretty much guess on that. But uh, they also have the new grip texture. So just guessing, even if you didn't research it, what do you think the new grip texture is called? Performance duty <laughs> something? A grip texture, texture. that's <laughs> what it's called, yeah. yeah. Pretty much everything. Performance duty, trigger guard, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but they definitely use their PDP uh, throughout this uh, as far as the gun goes itself. Right off the bat, it has the exact same, if you guys are familiar with the Walthers of the past, or even the HKs, uh, not exactly the HK, but in, in a sense, it has that like bumpy, how would you describe that grip? It's like, it's not finger grooves, but it's like that's the bumpy. Yeah, it does have almost finger groove-like feelings to it. But it's on the sides, not in the front, because mm -hmm. I, I despise finger grooves in the front. Anyway, um, when we go shoot it, I'll, I'll give you my impressions. Just holding the gun, though, I don't really notice anything. I, I, it just uh, seems like a nice grip. Looking at it, you wouldn't think it was very aggressive, but I think it's actually very aggressive. I mean, it's not enough it's going to, like, scratch your skin if you're wearing it, but... It's definitely going to hold on there. Yeah, and I mean, you can get down in the weeds if you want. You can go to Walther's website. They talk about the shape of it, and there's a pyramid and an octagon, and I don't know, and there's pixie dust and magic. But anyway, it's a, it's a good grip. I like it. It feels comfortable in the hand. Uh, I'll see how it is when we shoot it on the range some. The trigger itself is pretty good. What do you, what do you think of the trigger, Kim? It's a great trigger. So we'll give you a close-up here in a minute. Uh, when we take the camera down, you'll be able to see the where it breaks in the reset. Uh, I would say the trigger is very uh, Canik-esque, or maybe the Canik is more Walther-esque. I, <laughs> I don't know who was first on that, but very similar trigger. I did do, do some measurements, and the SFX, uh, the Canik is a lighter trigger overall, but very, very similar. Uh, out of the box, it's, it is a great trigger. I, I mean, I prefer the flat face uh, engagement with your finger, just my preference. So I, I have shot the Pro uh, of this model that has a flat face on it. I like it a lot, but I mean the trigger, I, I really wouldn't mess with it if, it if it were up to me. What I would change, and um, this, is a, this is a plus and a minus, are the sights are garbage. Uh, these are Glock plastic sights. 
Uh, they are adjustable in the back, but I'm not a fan, not at all. The good news is they're Glock sights, meaning who has the most sights of any manufacturer out there? I mean, everybody makes a Glock something, right? So if there is any sight out there that you like, great news, here you go. So it's got to be the most compatible uh, sight option out there. So whatever you like, I like night vision, but whatever your, whatever your flavor is, you can go and roll with that. Before we take a closer look at the actual pistol, I thought I would pull out the magazine. Um, it doesn't have any uh, polymer coating on it like the Glocks do, so hopefully it's not going to stick like they do. Size-wise, it's very comparable to the Glock 19, so you can understand the size of it. Uh, I would say the grip is a little bit slightly longer on the Walther, but not by much. Here is another view for you guys. As I mentioned before, the, the magazine is just metal, whereas the Glock, they put like a polymer uh, coating on it. And one big issue a lot of people have in our classes, especially as the magazines start getting dirty, they often want to stick because of that texture on there. So I like having just the metal. They seem to fall easier. So we have the magazine release right here. You can adjust it to make it for a lefty. The slide lock slide release lever is a, um, ambidextrous, so it does go on both sides. Let's look closer at the trigger. So it's got a nice predictable wall there, a nice clean break. Let's look at the reset. It's a nice smooth trigger. As for field stripping and takedown, pretty uh, pretty standard fare there. If you're if you are familiar with Walther's, nothing special really with this one. It's uh, similar to the the Glock takedown where you're pulling the tabs down, but I think this is a a superior design to the Glock with the little tiny tabs when it gets sweaty and wet and you get oil on your fingers or when you're cleaning guns or whatever it's kind of a pain this tab is a little bit bigger uh, pretty straightforward obviously we're gonna check and make sure everything's clear which it is press the trigger in a safe direction I'm gonna pull the slide back just ever so much pull the tabs down that slide will come right off okay and if you're familiar with Canix you notice that's a very familiar look to you and we have the guide rod here, which unfortunately is plastic. I would prefer that to be steel, but it's been working out with a lot of popular guns. And then, of course, we have our barrel. Standard fair stuff, nothing uh, earth-shattering about the uh, internals of the gun. Um, that classic Walther spring return, just like uh, on the Canics. Reassembly is the same setup. Barrel goes in first. These also do come in a threaded barrel, by the way. If, if you'd like and then make sure your spring is in there straight which it is line it back up not a big deal and we're back in business so it works so that's it uh, pretty easy straightforward field strip and maintenance so one more thing that's important is that they call this a modular gun I mean I think the only real modular gun that is really popular is the SIG uh, 320 where you take the actual firing mechanism out and you can put it in any any frame or slide you want But what Walter is referring to is that you can have any configuration you can have any grip now This is the compact so this is the shorter four inch slide with the compact grip You can also get this four inch slide on a full-size grip You can also get a five inch slide on this compact grip uh, And then any other combination you want you can have a five inch slide a compact grip, five inch on a full size, four and a half on a full size, four and a half on a compact, you get my point. So you can have this configured any way you like. Uh, personally, I would like, because I have larger hands, although this grip is actually, I have to say, even with my larger hands, I can still get all my fingers on there. Uh, and that little lip down here at the bottom actually kind of helps really make sure I get a nice high grip on the front strap. So I, I really, it really doesn't bother me. Um, but I would still probably go with a full size grip for sure. Plus, we're going to get increased capacity instead of the 15 rounds up to 17. And I would probably go with a four and a half inch uh, just to give myself a little bit more uh, mass in the top. I think it'd be a really smooth shooting gun. Uh, so when I get an opportunity one of the days, maybe we'll check that out. But just so you know, you can get this in any configuration you want. You can also look it up with pretty much any popular optic that you want to use. Uh, you're going to have a plate that will that will make that happen. A couple questions I've had in the past about these. The plate itself is metal. It's not a plastic plate. There's a lot of manufacturers now that are going to a plastic plate. 
uh, every reviewer and every person I've talked to, every real shooter, they all say, well, it's plastic, so it's probably not as strong, but yet nobody's really experienced any problems either. So uh, I don't know, but I will tell you that it is a metal plate if that's of something of interest to you. We forgot to mention earlier, it does have a rail here, so if you want to add a light or whatever accessory you like, it does have that option. Now we're going to head out to the range and shoot it and get our impressions of it. We are here at the range, and once again, it is deceivingly cold. We have the Walther PDP. I have the uh, TLR1 light because I'm running the Black Hawk Omnivore holster. Uh, we use this a lot. You see a lot of different films because I can just put that light on any gun that will hold the light, and the holster will work great. Uh, we're also using the Pitbull Tactical mag pouch because it'll pretty much hit any magazine you want from single to double stack. And so that sets us up for some uh, universal setups for all the different guns we're going to do. So let's take a look, uh, get some rounds out of this bad boy and see how it goes. Uh, as you can notice again, as I said earlier, uh, the uh, red dot is taken off so I can give it a fair shake as far as accuracy and shooting. Uh, I'm also very interested to see, as I said earlier, about the grip. Um, being that it's kind of that HK style, it's got little side bumps on it. We'll see what we think about that. Here we go. Wow, mags are fast on that. I mean, they, they go right in there, easy to find. The, the press of the mag release is very, very comfortable, very good. Almost no movement necessary for that, so I like that a lot. Um, the sights are a little bit the desire for the classic Glock uh, sights. They are adjustable, but not really my cup of tea. Let's take a look at some accuracy. Ready, Here we are at seven yards. See how she does. Let's go take a look. Five rounds. But they're all in. Pull one a little lower than I would like to, but all in all, very accurate gun. Time for a reload, see how that goes. We already did one already, but I want to see this again. Uh, how fast we can move this with this. I, I really feel that the magazine goes in well. It really shoots the mags out. I mean, it's pretty pretty nice in that regard. Magwell's big, so. Let's see how this goes here. I don't want to give it a try now. This is my first time shooting it, so let's give it a go. Very good, I like it. I did good that time. <laughs> awesome trigger. I can see why a lot of people are fans of it. Um, when it's a little warmer, I'd love to spend some more time out here shooting it. It's a great gun so far. The grip's good. It's uh, not too big. Like I said, I have really small hands and I'm able to reach the trigger really well. So great gun so far. As you guys know, I, I like to, uh, I say this in every video, I probably should stop explaining it, but there's new people all the time. I like to throw a spent casing somewhere. There's some live ones underneath it, some live ones on top. And I like to do that just to induce a magazine, uh, magazine, to induce a malfunction so that we can get uh, some reps on that. Uh, I recommend you do that anytime you go to the range, by the way, but we're gonna see how, uh, how it does here in the wall thing. So. That one, by the way, uh, that went home without uh, me actually pressing the slide release. Just uh, that'll happen, especially on the Glocks. Uh, used to happen all the time with MMPs as well, but they since put a little uh, 
this thing in there, which they took out for the metal. I, uh, the metal, the 2.0, you can see that review. It was kind of interesting Well, they went back and forth, but let's uh, take a look at the male function. Just like it should. After spending some time with this, uh, the trigger is definitely phenomenal. It reminds me very much of the Canix. I'm a big Canix fan. Uh, very, very similar. I have shot, uh, this is the first time I shot, by the way, the PDP just in a standard format. I shot the PDP Pro with the, with the flat trigger. That one was pretty awesome. I mean, if I was going to spend money on it, I probably would get that one. Just because I'm a flat, uh, I like the, flat, the feel of the flat uh, trigger. The grip, as I was very surprised, I didn't notice those little bumps at all. I hated finger grooves, especially with the Glocks. I hated finger grooves. Um, these obviously don't have that. And this kind of a more pronounced ridge in the back. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about that, but honestly, it just, it's, it naturally points well. It feels good in the hand. That uh, pyramided octagonal grip texture, it's, it's good. I mean, my hands are really cold right now. And uh, it has good grip on it. If it was wet, I'd feel comfortable with that. I wouldn't uh, feel like I need to go and get it stippled or anything. I think it feels really, really good until that starts to really wear out. I, I think that's very nice. The most shocking thing about this gun, as I said before, is the weight. It just, it looks chunky and very heavy, but it is not. It is extremely light. Uh, with the uh, rail on there, the, the light is easy to access. Uh, magazine release, very large. Very easy to hit. Uh, all in all, and the beaver tail is very, very nice. You can get really high without any worries of getting getting over the uh, over the tail in the back there. It's very impressive. Obviously, the sights, in my opinion, have to go. But other than that, uh, man, I, if I had to choose, like the TP9, this gun, or even the M&P, I, I don't know. I mean, I really like this gun. It, it would be a really tough choice. I don't think you can go wrong with any of them, but uh, really nice feel. The one thing I also like is the those deep serrations up top for press checks or for fixing malfunction or whatever. Those are, they'll leave some skin behind. We hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please give us a like, a thumbs up, a share, a comment. We always love to hear from you. Make sure you subscribe here on YouTube. Click the bell so you get notified every time we put a video out. You can find us on Facebook, on Instagram, on Rumble. And of course, we put all of our premium content on Patreon. Until next time, remember, it's always better to be judged by 12 than carried by 6.